ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. In this address resolution protocol section, we're going to first talk about IP addresses and some IP addressing rules. We'll talk about what a physical segment is, and then we'll talk about the address resolution protocol itself. We'll talk about the difference between local and remote hosts, and we'll talk about how this local and remote algorithm works. We'll talk about how a source computer obtains the MAC address, the appropriate MAC address when trying to communicate with a, lo with a local host. We'll talk about how a source computer obtains the proper MAC address when trying to communicate with remote hosts, and then we'll talk about what breaks the address resolution protocol. IP addresses. Now each TCP IP device or each host or each computer needs a unique IP address, at least one unique IP address. If it has additional connections to the network, it will need a unique IP address for each connection to the network. It also will need a subnet mask. Now a subnet mask is a number that accompanies the IP address and identifies which portion of the IP address is the network ID and which portion of the IP address is the host ID. The IP address and subnet mask are interrelated and each only has meaning in the context of each other. The IP address and subnet mask are the minimum addressing requirement for any TCP device. If a device has an IP address and it has a subnet mask, it will be capable of local communications. This is communicating with any other host or device on its same physical segment. Now if I want to configure my uh, computer or host for remote communication, in most cases I will want to do that, I would need to enter in the address of the default gateway. Now when I talk about remote communication, I'm saying that I want to connect to hosts that are on different physical segments than mine. So in order to do that, I would configure the default gateway. Now the default gateway is the IP address of the router on my same physical segment. So once I've added the IP address and subnet mask, I have local communications. I can communicate to hosts on my same physical segment. And by adding the default gateway, the IP address of the router on my segment, then I'll have remote communication and be able to potentially communicate with everyone on the network. There are a couple of very important IP addressing rules. Now each device or each host needs at least one unique IP address. Actually a host needs a unique IP address for each connection to the network. So if a host for instance or a computer had three different network interface cards, each network interface card would require a unique IP address. Also, all devices on the same physical segment share a common network ID or network portion of their IP address. Now they will have a unique host ID, but again, all devices on a physical segment share a common network ID as specified by the subnet mask. Also, if your network has multiple physical segments, each physical segment would have a unique network ID, and of course, all computers on each physical segment share that physical segment's network ID. One key piece of terminology we must be familiar with is what is a physical segment? Now a physical segment can be thought of a broadcast domain. Now when we talk about a broadcast domain we're talking about a portion of the network or all devices that can exchange information using a broadcast packet. Now if two devices are separated by a repeater, a bridge, or a switch, they are considered in the same broadcast domain because these devices will forward broadcast. However, if we have a router, a router will not forward broadcast and they really define our physical segments. So our definition of what is a physical segment, well it's everything out one port of a router or between two routers and that's again because a router does not forward a broadcast. Now this is important because of our IP addressing rules. Remember, all devices on the same physical segment share a common network ID. So that means all devices out one port of a router or between two routers would be on the same physical segment and therefore they would have a, the very same network ID. Now of course they'll have a unique host ID to give them a unique IP address, but they all share a common network ID. Also, each physical segment has a unique network ID. So if we have a router with three different ports, that would give us three physical segments, and each physical segment would have a unique network ID, keeping in mind that all devices on each of those physical, physical segments would share the common network ID for that physical segment. ARP. Now the job of the address resolution protocol is to map a MAC or hardware address to the destination host or router's IP address. 
Now when I talk about a MAC or hardware address, sometimes this is called a physical address. This is a unique address, a six byte address in most cases, that's burned into the network interface card by the manufacturer of the network interface card. Now every NIC card should have a unique hardware address. Now the source computer will retrieve the appropriate MAC address either from cache or from a broadcast and we'll talk about this process in the coming slides. But once it has the appropriate MAC address, it places that MAC address in the address field of the data link frame. So this would be the address field, the destination address field in the Ethernet frame or the token ring frame. Local remote. When two IP devices are trying to communicate, the source device looks at the destination devices or host's IP address to determine if it is local or remote. If the destination device or host is on the same physical segment or the same subnet, then the destination host is considered local. Now, if the destination host is on a different physical segment or a different subnet, then the destination is considered remote. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a next network to it or a network a million miles away, it is considered remote. The local or remote algorithm. Now, before data can be transferred over an IP network, a TCP connection must be set up. Now, in order for a TCP connection to be set up, the IP address of the destination computer must first be obtained. Now that could be through a, a different service like DNS or WINS or through a broadcast, but in order to set up the connection, the source computer needs the IP address of the destination computer. Now once the source computer has the IP address of the destination computer, it looks at that IP address to determine if it's local or remote. The source host then uses its subnet mask to determine the network ID of the destination IP address it compares the destination's network ID to its own network ID. If the destination host's network ID is the same as the source host ID, the destination is considered local. When we say local, that means it's on the same physical segment or subnet as the source host. Now the source host will then check its ARP cache for the cached MAC address of the destination host, because if the uh, source host has communicated to the destination host in the last few minutes, it will have its ARP cache uh, from that session. Now, if the destination host MAC address is not in the cache, the source host will initiate a local broadcast, and that broadcast will be sent to all computers or all hosts on the physical segment. Now, only the destination computer will return its MAC address and then the source host will then take the MAC address, throw it in its cache in case it needs it in the next few minutes, and then it will take the MAC address and put it in the destination address field of the Ethernet frame or the token ring frame, and then send the packet out or the frame out to set up a TCP connection. If the source host examines the destination host's network ID and see it's different than its own network ID, then the destination host is considered remote. It's on a different physical segment or a different subnet. Doesn't matter if it's the next one or it's 100 miles away, it's considered remote. Now, if the destination is remote, the source host will check its local routing table for a special route to the network that the destination host resides on. Now, if there is a special route, the source computer will check its ARP cache for a cached MAC entry of the router that's associated with the network that the destination computer is on. If the router's MAC address is not in cache, then the source computer will initiate a local broadcast to obtain the router's MAC address. Now, that broadcast, again, would go out to the entire physical segment, uh, all computers in the physical segment would see that broadcast, but only the router return its MAC address. Then the source computer would take the router's MAC address, put it in the cache in, cases it, in case it needs it in a later session, and then place the router's destination MAC address in the address field of the Ethernet packet and forward the packet to the router. And then the router would take the packet and then route it to the destination network. If the destination computer's network ID is different than the network ID of the source computer, the destination computer is considered remote. Now remember, if the destination computer is considered remote, the source host checks its local routing table for a route or a special router to the destination network. Now if there is no special router, then the 
de source host uses its configured default gateway. But in order to send data to the default gateway, it has to get the MAC address of the default gateway. So first thing it's going to do is look in its cache, because if it connected to the default gateway in the last few minutes, it'll have its MAC address. If it looks in the cache and there is no MAC address for the default gateway, it will initiate a local broadcast. Now that broadcast, again, will go out to the entire physical segment. Only the default gateway will return its MAC address. And once the source host has the MAC address, it will cache it in case it needs to use it again. And it will also place that MAC address in the destination address of, for example, the Ethernet frame. Because then it can transfer the Ethernet frame to the router, knowing that the router will then route that packet to the destination network. Well, what breaks it? What breaks ARP? Well, if your IP addresses are entered incorrectly, that will break it. Because remember, all hosts in the same physical segment must have the same network ID. And each physical segment requires unique network ID. Now, if two hosts are on the same physical segment, but yet they are configured with different network IDs, what will happen is, is that when you're trying to communicate from one computer to another, it will see the computer as remote when it's really local, and then communication will fail. Also, if the subnet masks are entered incorrectly, it will also break the local and remote algorithm. Then when computers are really local, they'll appear remote, or when they're really remote, they will appear local. Also, if the default gateway is entered incorrectly, then chances are you may very well have local communications. You'll be able to communicate on your own segment, but you will not be able to communicate on another segment. Also, incorrect entries, now this is, would not happen very commonly, but incorrect entries in your route table could also uh, make communication fail. ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. Now remember the purpose of the ARP is to map or to associate a MAC address, a network interface card address, to a specific IP address. ARP obtains MAC addresses either from its own cache from previous sessions or with a local broadcast. And of course, that local broadcast will then travel throughout the physical segment. Now, the key here is that wor ARP works automatically. It requires no maintenance if the IP addresses are set up correctly. So you have to put in your IP address correctly. You have to put in your subnet mask correctly. You have to put in your default gateway correctly. And if you do that, ARP works automatically. Now, if you do put any of those in incorrectly, you will break the local remote algorithm and you will have unsuccessful network communication.